Hi there, my name's Damien and I'm going to do this presentation on how you take your research network that next step forward. It's an absolute pleasure to be delighted to this ICAM session and I think it's afternoon, perhaps evening for you guys. Uh, for myself, it would have been about one or two o'clock in the morning, so I'm really sorry I've not been able to be with you today. My name's Damien Rowland and I'm the immediate past chair of Peruki. Now, there's a lot that we've learned over the last near decade now since Peruki was formed in 2012. And this is a picture of the initial group of us who got together, um, led by a number of real stalwarts in pediatric emergency care, Ian McConaughey, Mark Little, Stuart Hartshorn, uh, amongst many, uh, many others. And it's been a really exciting period. We've seen pediatric emergency medicine grow rapidly, thanks to the likes of, of Pern uh, leading the way forward in, in bringing big uh, collaborations together. But Peruki itself has gone from a, a very humble beginning, just I suppose 16 or 20 of us, to a, a, a big organization now. So we've got, I think, nearly 60 hospitals on board, and each of those 60 hospitals has a representative who contributes to a, what is now quite a large research steering committee. Um, and I think that way of giving individual hospitals a voice in the larger Peruki network has been really powerful in driving forward our processes. And so one of the things that we've needed to do really well is communicate. You've got to keep people informed and up to date. One way we've done that is using newsletters. It's really simple. But every so often we send a one to two page A4 uh, PDF document out with the studies that, that we're doing, the studies that we've done, the studies that we're going to do, little bits of updates, little bit of a round of applause for sites that have recruited well. These are really simple things, but they work really well for developing engagement. The other thing is kind of communicating with the use of social media, but I'm going to come on to that in a second. In order to drive forward our initial work, I think like a lot of uh, research networks, we started off with a prioritization exercise and, and ours was published uh, in around 2014, 2015. Um, the challenge, I suppose, is, is keeping that up to date. And one of the things that we're going to need to do as an organization is repeat those research priorities shortly. Those initial research priorities are really useful, though, for bringing a group together and to determining what you're interested in. And one of our early research priorities was the management of asthma. And through that research priority, we created a, an asthma group, so a, a group of individuals really interested in asthma, who then went off and drove quite a large amount of research specifically around asthma on behalf of Peruki. And a good way of garnishing initial engagement is to do variation in practice surveys. You can get individuals or groups together and highlight what they do. And this is relatively simple research, but it's really powerful because it demonstrates actually how extreme the variation that we have in pediatric emergency care actually is. And so that was a good way that we started developing. And then we've also used exactly that same principle of looking at variation in practice, but we've started a process called Route to Research. So we've used trainees, junior doctors, initial consultants to come together and support their progress in using research. Um, and so a recent publication in the Emergency Medicine Journal was led by Mary Altojos Cleaver at the time of research training, who we've supported through this progress. And building that capacity is absolutely vital for any network because that enables you to have enough people to do large randomized controlled trials um, and Eclipse is a, a fantastic um, example of something that Peruki have been involved in um, from the outset, looking at the management of status. And at exactly the same time we were doing Eclipse, uh, Predict were doing Concept. Uh, and being able to do those big landmark RCTs um, has continued with Peruki. We've recently published the CAPIT study. So that's looking at uh, duration and uh, um, formulation of amoxicillin uh, in the treatment of pneumonia. 
Now, one of the things, uh, and I mentioned social media earlier, we've been partnered with Don't Forget the Bubbles uh, for some time, um, and that the team have done some amazing social media resources. So that's not just a blog on a website with some fancy infographics. Tessa Davis has done a fantastic video, which is now on YouTube, uh, which is a really short pre of how the CAPIT study worked, uh, positives, negatives, uh, limitations, etc., all packaged in a five minute bundle. And, and we're hoping to use that ability to disseminate more and more as we go on. It was also useful in, in CAPIT to, to work really closely with research nurses. And it's really important that research networks remember it's not just about doctors, it's about nurses, research nurses, uh, other allied healthcare professionals, advanced clinical practitioners. And I think we've been really mindful in Peruki of getting everyone together. And we did work specifically with the research nurses, what enabled you to, or what were the challenges to recruitment in CAPIT and what were the things that were uh, better to do? What were the enablers? Um, and we have a really powerful research nurse group. Um, and I think we've worked really hard with those, especially in CAPIT to draw out tangible learning, which then goes on to future studies. The other thing we've done is, is I suppose, broaden a horizon so that the fourth study, which will be published imminently, uh, perhaps even in the next week or so, looking at the management of buccal fractures, we've continued to work with, with Mr. Dan Perry on specific orthopedic studies. So if you look at uh, the management of off-ended wrist fractures, you would argue that some of these fractures do need uh, a surgical intervention. The CRAS study is going to look at some of these fractures just healing of their own accord in a plaster cast. Now, CRAFT probably is a primary orthopedic study, but it recruits patients from the pediatric emergency department and that's again how we've grown our network just a, a little heads up to tarn that's our trauma and audit research network which is completely distinct from Pruki, but we've now started a number of collaborative studies using that data but analyzed by Pruki members to produce publications specifically around adolescent trauma and looking for those large databases is a good thing for research networks to do to try and uh, help other networks grow themselves, network collaboration, I suppose. And then the final couple of things we've done is look at international variation. Uh, let's take your infant with potential bronchiolitis, for example. What do you do if they've got a fever? Do you do a lumbar puncture or not? And this is a, a neat study we did with the Canadians looking at what, what turned out to be actually quite large um, perceived variation in practice. Now, we don't know what happens on the ground because this is just uh, clinicians feeding back what they would do, but it just opens up loads of questions. And that variation in practice is proof he's really proud of some of the things that we've done uh, to show that the variation in our practice isn't quite as great as the variation in other network practices. Um, but this is something for all networks uh, to work together and look together on. And then finally, it's about digitalizing the way that you work, and it just makes things so much easier. So the Bronx Start study, this was a prospective observational study, started because of the experiences in New Zealand. And what we've done here is created a rapid fire red cap form that clinicians can easily enter data into in real time now. So we can, we can see and I can share a website that has the real time data collection for the Bronx Start study, which has enabled us to really look at how bronchiolitis has affected us in a post COVID age. Pruki have some strength. Uh, we're, we're innately enthusiastic. We, we remember what we do and what we try to be is clinically led um, with scientific and academic adv advice. But is that clinician leadership that's really important? We continue to have challenges. It's not all roses. Funding is a massive issue to us. We're not funded like the Americans centrally. We have to get funding from other studies we collaborate with. And we do have a bit of an issue of actually taking the learning that I suppose I'm using now and sharing that wider. And this is why I'm going to use this video in our own network. Um, but finally, I just really wanted to end with one of the things that we've been most proud of in Peruki is getting clinicians involved who, who aren't researchers. They're not going to spend their year, their lives in universities, but they're really interested in the research that Peruki pro uh, produces. And that it's, it's that mentality of getting clinicians on the shop floor engaged in Peruki studies, which I think is our greatest strength. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I'm really sure, sorry, I can't be there for questions, uh, but please do email us uh, and we'll pick those up. Uh, thank you very much.